Good evening, Mark from Exile here, uh, and another video tasting. Um, this time, Bordeaux, and specifically two Bordeaux that did very well at last year's 2020's Decanter World Wine Awards. They are young Bordeaux, uh, which makes them a bit unusual. They are both from Chateau Bordier in the Côte de Blaye, which is to say on the right bank of the Garonne as it flows out to the sea, directly opposite all the great Appalachian of the left bank, so directly opposite Saint Julien and the region just there. Now, uh, the tasting is to do two things, to tell you a little bit of what to expect and what not to expect with these two wines. The other part of it actually is to compare and contrast them very slightly. And so we'll go straight to that. Now, um, they are young Bordeaux. See, if we were in Rioja, some, there will be plenty of clues to that. You know, it would say probably on these Criantha or even Joven to indicate that they've been nowhere near oak and that they are really quite young wines. Um, the two specifically are the standard Chateau Bordier, as they call it, which is actually what they, their, their Grand Van, their main wine from the Chateau. That wine is completely unoaked. It is fermented in steel and kept in steel until it's bottled. And as you can tell, it's 2019, we're now early in 2021, and clearly that is a young wine. Similarly with the uh, the number one, 2019 wine, that however has taken a short amount of uh, time against oak, and therefore some of that is infused in, it's a little more oxygen come into the wine as well. But again, it's a young wine. So if we were talking Rioja, this one, the classic Bordier, would be classed, uh, classed as a Hoven and, and this as a, as a Criantha, having spent, I think, barely six months against oak. So I use that because if we were talking about Rioja, you would kind of know what to expect. You would know you're not getting into a Grand Reserva and all of that old aged wooded flavour. I think there is a slight perception when you're buying Bordeaux to think of Bordeaux as a single category and everything is much the same. Um, and clearly it's not. You know, these are not. Margot. These are not Pouillac. These are not the classic apple, and neither are they Pomerol or saint -Emilion. Clearly, at £13, they're not going to be at a quality point, and clearly, in terms of their style and their age, they are not designed like the long-distance Vanaguard, these great keeping wines from Bordeaux. You want those, you're going to be spending £30, £40 and upwards, and, and into, you know, stellar prices if you choose. These are easy-going, I was about to say lightweight wines, but they're not lightweight. There's plenty of flavour, there's plenty of depth, there's plenty of body to them. But they are not designed as the classic great Bordeaux. That said, they are of a great quality and they are really easy and really lovely drinking. Um, but they do, both of them, have quite a crunch to them. They are young, they have acidity, they have tannins. And there is a bit of a question about when to drink them. And the Chateau themselves, the Monsieur Schweitzer, the, uh, the three-man team that runs that, they are adamant, and they are of a view, that they are wines to drink straight away. And I would agree with them. They are absolutely ready to drink now. I think both of them need food at this point in time. The tannins and the acidity lend themselves to that. There's almost a sort of Italianness about that crunch to them, in a way. I did a bit of Spanish just now, a bit of Italian. I know I'm still talking about Bordeaux. And with food... I would say they're absolutely ready to go. They are probably not quite at their peak for drinking just yet. Otherwise, I would say if you're going to try and enjoy them as a glass on their own, then probably await a little longer. They are, however, Merlot-based. Uh, both of them are clear of, I think, 85% Merlot. Balancing amounts of Malbec, Cabernet Franc, Cabernet Sauvignon, very slightly different between the two wines. And what that brings to both of them is plenty of dark plushness and richness. So if we have a little sniff and we get a little bit of a feeling about them, the classic, the Bordia, and we take the number one. Honestly, not a lot to choose between on the nose. I would say that the classic Bordia is a little more fruit forward. There's a little more punch, there's a little more delivery, a sort of jamminess to it in a way. Whereas there's a slightly more restrained dis about the number one. Um, you can get a little bit of the sort of the vanilla notes on the nose, which is coming obviously, obviously from the oak in the number one. On the palate, they are very similar. For all the fact that they are different, and 
there is a difference in approach as to how they're made. They're coming from the same vineyards, the same vintage, the same grapes, almost exactly. This is more fruit forward, a little more crackly, a little more tannic and acidic. It's almost a bit more of the fruit bomb. This is the one that won the Platinum Award of the two, so he's nominally, in the view of Decanter World Wine Awards panel, that little bit better. It's definitely a little more immediate, a little more giving. I suppose of the two, and I'm only trying to draw parallels between them, it's a bit more of a fruit bomb. This one, a little more restrained. The fact that it spent that oak time, it's just mellowed it, made it a little bit more supple, a bit smoother. I'm probably more of a fan of the number one. I, I like oak and I like the things it does to a wine. It's just given it a more suppleness, uh, an ease of drinking. Actually, slightly easier to drink on its own at this point in time. I kind of think this one, however, in a year's time is going to be the more interesting. There's a fruit intensity about this one, which is greater. That said, they are pretty similar. I did think about doing this as a blind tasting to see if I could tell them apart. I think I'd be able to, but I haven't run the risk of embarrassing myself on film doing that. But they are remarkably similar. Uh, the classic Bordeaux, 1295. The Bordeaux number one, 1345. Incredible wines for the money, no doubt about it. Again, I wouldn't overexpect them. I think it's possible to say that Decanter have perhaps slightly overegged the descriptions and the awarding in these. I think it's... Is this a 97-point wine? I'm not sure that it is. Is this a 95-point wine that it is? I'm not sure that it is. They are great wines, unquestionably, and I think compared with an awful lot of the younger, everyday Bordeaux you might run into, they are great wines and thoroughly attractive, great with food. They're going to be great in a couple of years' time as well. Slightly over-egged? Maybe. Still fabulous, great prices, enjoy them.